llamo Jaime Dixon. Nosotros de aquí vivíamos sin agua. Good morning, friend. My name is Jaime Dixon. We, the people from here, lived without water. David and Joellen came here. And through their generosity, they came and started a health clinic and installed water tanks for many in the community. They came and gave scholarships for the students to study. They have continued to help the community by bringing different groups like doctors. Our friends from the United States have continued and shared many things with us, and for that, we are very grateful. Before we lived very poor and we did not have anything. Thanks to them, they came and now we have our own water. They continued with the clinic, with medicine. Thank you for the water tank and the clean, healthy water that we are now drinking. Because before this, there were many diseases from the water and many children suffered from fevers. Before we drank dirty water, even water that smelled bad. When I had these children, there were no neighbors or family around to help take care of the children. I would wake up and look for water with two big buckets in my bag, I would haul water for me to cook. Because there was not a well close by, I had to go really far. It was hard on my belly and I lost the baby in a miscarriage. But now we have no problem. Now I thank God because we have water nearby. We have three wells now, very close, provided by these brothers who have come from far away from the U.S. to help with these water projects for this place. Before, when we drank water, there was not good water. It was dirty water, and we got sick. Now we have clear water, and now my family is not getting sick. My name is Belkis, Belkis Quiros, and I am the teacher of the Valle Grande School. In this community, there are approximately 110 inhabitants. Our principal problem always has been water. Water is our vital resource and we don't have enough of it. In my eight years working in this community, I've gotten to know the organizations that have made our quality of life better, bringing reserve tanks of water, helping us in our small communities that have been forgotten by government organizations and institutions. So two years ago, they brought the tanks. We have a tank here now. In previous years, other members of the community have benefited, not just the school, but in various homes, they've installed reserve tanks. Our communities feel totally grateful with this benefit, bringing us from a cruel past to a better quality of life. In past years when these organizations did not exist, members of our community died from many illnesses, skin infections, amoebas, and many other parasites. So thanks to all of you, your collaboration, the love in your heart, and your support has brought a drop of hope, of happiness to our lives. We thank you with all our hearts. Thank you. When we went over to the elementary school, we went into their classrooms. Looking at one of the chalkboards, you could see right through the chalkboard to the outside. It was so rotted but they still used the part of the chalkboard that they could use. The, their desks that they sat in um, were just like a one-person desk, and they had the wooden top on it, and you could lift the top off. And well, Just to clarify, those tables weren't meant to be able to come off. They did, just fell off. No, they're just... So hopefully, you know, next time we go down, we can um, bring some desktops with us. Uh, the water tanks... Uh, the clean water that's going, that, uh, you know, when those kids are healthy, that comes from drinking clean water, uh, they can go so much farther. Here is a photo of your sponsor, Mr. Wayne Lovett. He really liked the letter that you wrote him. He cares very much for you. He does. He does. And he, do you have a message uh, for Wayne? For estar usted aquí apoyándonos a mi familia, a mis hermanas y a mí, poder seguir estudiando porque sin ustedes no sé si yo puedo lo llegar hasta donde que estoy ahorita. Pecho. No sé cómo agradecerle. He don't know how to thank, give you guys thanks. <laughs> Uh, you, you go out and you spend from like nine to about five-ish working, whether it be, what else did we do? We lay down cement, 
we put in wells, we dug wells, we um, played with kids. <laughs> uh, it didn't matter whether it was a weird sombrero or a cat, which wasn't a cat or a dog or whatever. Um, just I would blow up a balloon, tie it for the kids, and whether it'd be just a snake or if it'd just be some random thing that I tied, they'd always just laugh and giggle and play with it until it popped and I'd blow up a new one. And just to see the happiness over a simple balloon, it's like the highlight of their day. I'm Evan. I have been on the trip two times now. We want to train them and have them invest time and in trade for the time that they invest we can give them a tank or part of a water system. Um, that way we're not just giving it out. They have to invest something and then they would feel more <coughs> responsibility because they've put their time into getting it. You, you start to learn how to communicate without words, you know, and you know, realizing that you can work with people and you can work together towards a common goal even though you can't speak. It's life-changing. Absolutely life-changing. You will see things you can't see here. I can tell you that. I would say to someone who might want to come down here is do it. It's a huge blessing and it's a huge eye-opening to truly see what real poverty um, looks like.